Now, it's been less than a year since New Zealand introduced its synthetic drug laws and a visiting drug reformer says while the legislation is a global breakthrough, the market for synthetic alternative highs would disappear completely if cannabis was legalised. Dr Nadelman is the founder of the Drug Policy Alliance in the US and is in Auckland for the upcoming International Drug Symposium. Good morning, Ethan. Thanks Good morning. for joining us. Uh, so obviously, Colorado, is uh, you were deeply involved in that uh, legislation change? Well, I mean, the change in the United States has been incredible. We've gone from having maybe one third of the country in favor of taxing and regulating marijuana just 10 years ago to over 55 percent now. So what you saw in Colorado and Washington is almost certainly going to be happening in other states around the United States. And as we saw Uruguay do just a few months ago in Latin America, probably other countries as well. What do you think of our Psychoactive Substance Act? I have to say, I mean, it, it seems like a model of the adult approach to dealing with the issue of illicit drugs, right? Here you have a problem in New Zealand where lots of people are using these party drugs, this synthetic cannabis. Nobody knows exactly what's in them or what they will do. People would probably be better off, relatively speaking, if they're going to use anything using real cannabis. But your government got together bipartisan and passed this legislation to say our bottom line has to be on health and safety, especially of our children. And the best way to do that is not to continue with the failed prohibitionist policy, but to come up with a sensible regulatory approach so that at least if people are going to be doing these drugs, we know what's in them and we can give them a stamp of safety if in fact they are safe. Okay, so you're a supporter of that, but you do think this needs to open a discussion, perhaps to go even further? Well, I mean, the people in New Zealand have to decide that, right? It's very, you know, I look at New Zealand, I also look at Australia where I was a few years ago, and it's mm. a fairly thoughtful policy in dealing with the hard drugs like heroin and cocaine and a public health approach. But on marijuana, the conversation just kind of dawdles along. And it's so weird here, right? Because half of all adults in your country have tried marijuana. About a seventh of all adults use it with some regularity. Young people are using it, I think, as much here as in my country. And so why people want to put their hands over their eyes and just sort of have this debate go away? My hope is that in, in your government embracing this very pragmatic approach that focuses on health and safety, that'll open up some discussion that says, if we can do it with synthetic cannabis, shouldn't we at least be applying the same process to real cannabis? So you think it's safer to decriminalize? Well, it's definitely safer. I mean, arresting large numbers of people, we know that for most young people, more harm results from an arrest to your life than from using the occasional joint. I mean, the evidence is pretty clear on that. The question is, if you legalize it, as we're now doing in Colorado and Washington, the risk is that use might increase. But I don't think use is going to increase among young people, because they already have incredibly good access to marijuana. I think, if, you know who use is going to increase with Colorado and Washington? It's going to be older people. People in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s who decide they prefer it to the sleeping pill or to a drink at the end of the day mm. or for their arthritis or their aches and pains or maybe to spice up a 30-year-old marriage. I mean, that's really what's going to happen with legal the, marijuana. The problem being, though, some research here would suggest that uh, if you were to try marijuana, you're more likely, particularly with young people in this country, more likely to then experiment with harder, more serious drugs. Well, it's, it's more likely, but then there's 90% of all people who ever use marijuana don't go on. So this whole notion of marijuana being a gateway is mostly wrong but more importantly if you look at the Netherlands where marijuana has been sort of legal for 30 odd years which it turns out that the percent of young people who use marijuana and then go try harder drugs is less than in other countries why? Because the Dutch essentially separated the markets. In the Netherlands, here's where you go for marijuana, there's where you go for the other drugs. In most other countries, yours and mine, people tend to go to the same drug dealers, and that's why you get some gateway effect. Not because of some magical power about marijuana, but because of the illegal marketing. It's always been a divisive topic. Dr. Uh, Ethan Nadelman, thank you for joining us, and uh, best of luck for the symposium thank on Thursday. Thank you very Thursday. much. Thank you.